Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. As I record this video, XRP is taking off. It has just about hit 80 cents, and really the entirety of the crypto market has just been running. XRP specifically running strong over the last hour in particular. Uh, now for frame of reference, I am recording at, uh, let's see, it's currently 5.05 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time on August 7th, Saturday. And, and so you'll see over, I'm going to show you charts in a sec, but over most of the last 24 hours, yes, things certainly been trending upwards, but in particular over the last hour, we just had another one of those bursts of just out of nowhere. And, and so we'll see if it sustains. Again, things are, are always volatile, uh, especially when you see these big runs up. You never know if like if you, you know, fast forward a half hour or an hour later, what's it going to look like? So you are future people, you know more than me, but uh, right now where I'm sitting, it's looking rather pretty right now. Uh, so I want to talk about that and share with you a few comments from chart analysts, but uh, before we go any further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I am just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos on uh, crypto-related topics purely as a hobby, though. Uh, now, as I record this again, XRP, like I said, hovering just a hair shy of 80 cents, Bitcoin at $43,700. Market cap for the asset class, a little over $1.8 trillion. Haven't seen that in a hot minute, have we? Uh, Bitcoin dominance at 45.39%. Oh, and by the way, let's mention this too. I don't normally talk about Ethereum, but let's just briefly mention this. Ethereum is over $3,000. And for those of you that don't track it here, I'll actually just pull it up. Um, you know, go back, uh, let's just let's go over the last seven days. You go back seven days, it was at uh, 2,462. So it's it's been running to the upside too. And I wanted to mention something about this. Because um, last market cycle, Ethereum and XRP, they both had about the same peak in terms of market cap, although those did occur at different times. Not terribly different times, but they did. And uh, both of them had a market cap of uh, a peak of about, I think it was 180 billion or so, which is about half of what Bitcoin hit last market cycle. And so for XRP to catch up just to where Ethereum is now, and I think it's an inevitability. I, I suspect that's the case. So I'm, again, not making a price prediction uh, because it's, I don't pretend to know for sure anything, but I just, it'd be hard to believe that th there's a world where like XRP never gets up to the market cap that Ethereum has now. But if, if XRP does get up to the market cap that Ethereum has today, which is $358 billion, you will be looking at XRP being priced over $7. And, and so I, I keep saying, and I firmly believe this, the prices today, before this market cycle is complete, I think that the price for XRP today are still going to look rather cheap in hindsight. That's my suspicion. I, 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 I mean, do you really? Because if you have to bet one way or another... I mean, what, does XRP just go to zero or, or it stays at this price forever? It never gets up to 350, now 359 billion, like, like is what, what uh, Ether's sitting at? I have a real hard time swallowing that pill. I, I just don't think... So for me, it's more about letting the plan unfold effectively, which is basically... The, the market's trending upwards. Like the, the market has been for 12 years, uh, despite these major pullbacks, 80% down, 90% down, these things happen, but still trending upwards for 12 years. And there's no sign that's going to change even after this bubble inflates and pops. So like, uh, this is exciting to me. This is good stuff right here. And so here's the XRP chart over the last 24 hours. And you can see um, yeah, so just, it started running, what, about an hour ago? You can call it a little after 4 a.m. my time, Central Standard Time. Uh, and just get ran up to very close. It's just a hair shy. Uh, you know, fractions of a penny below uh, 80 cents right there. So perhaps it will hit that today. And, and Bitcoin, too. It's It's been running up like crazy. And it's fun, just like for, for, for perspective, it's so fun to look. If you can look at your screen, I encourage you to just for a moment. I know you, you don't have to. It'll be fine. I'll, I'll, I'll articulate what I'm what I'm showing on the screen here. Uh, what I have now is the XRP all-time chart on the screen. And so look at this massive parabolic move to the upside for XRP. This is when XRP ran from, uh, you know, the low 20 cent region up to almost $4 during the last market cycle. It started at the tail end, of, well, say mid-December uh, 2017, and then concluded its peak uh, hit G uh, January 4th of 2018. It just looks like a damn needle. Just straight up. And this is this is what every chart looked like. Like Bitcoin's chart looks like that. It looks, I mean, it's effectively the same thing. 
Um, and so did every other uh, every other coin that went parabolic, which was pretty well all of them. You know, every mid and large cap coin did for sure. And and as and I think um, as far as I know, all small cap coins did. If there's an outlier here or there, then fine. I'm just unaware of them because there's thousands of coins. But I'm telling you, but other than that, everything went up dramatically, and it looks huge. And then after the crash down, it looks like it's never going to happen again. But I wanted to show you visually, if you can look at the screen, this is why it's valuable to do so. <clears throat> Again, it, it, before I, sh I flip to the Bitcoin chart, which is what I'm going to do for comparison's sake, this, what, what this looks like here, that is what it looked like for Bitcoin a year ago. If you went to, the, it, like, it, on the chart, this huge, it looked just like that. It, it looked graphically intimidating right there. But here is the all-time Bitcoin chart now. And where I'm circling right now, this little blip right here, that was the previous all-time high when Bitcoin ran to uh, close to $20,000, right down here where I'm circling. And so it always seems impossible to get beyond that until it actually, actually happens. And history shows us that the people that are patient are the ones that do well in investing. That's true of the stock market, and that's true of crypto. We, we know that despite major pullbacks along the way historically, that we keep trending upwards, and I don't think that's going to stop happening. I just, I do not for the asset class as a whole. And I do think some coins are at some point going to go to zero when uh, when fundamentals become more important, and I don't pretend to know exactly when that's going to happen. So that is something to watch out for. There is real risk there for sure. But uh, outside of that, since the, the whole market seems to be treated the same way uh, you know, from one coin to the next, I that's what happened last market cycle and everything ran. I think it's going to happen again. I'd be very surprised if not. But but so you can see how, now, look at how monstrous this new run is with, with Bitcoin having run up to about $65,000. And I still don't think it's done. I think you're going to see another all-time high this market cycle. It's going to, you're going to have one more leg up and then we'll be after this in a multi-year bear market. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see something like this inside of the next four, five, six months. It's seeing the all-time high then, and there's no way to know for sure. I'm just saying if history repeats, it might be reasonable to suspect that's certainly possible at a minimum here. But uh, but people are, are in greed right now. Here's the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. Take a look at this. On a scale of 0 to 100, we're at 69, indicating that people are in greed. So as I keep citing, whatever is happening in terms of price action in the moment, the, the Fear and Greed Index responds accordingly. And, and what a way to live. What a way to live. That's why, like, if uh, if there were a world of only moon lambos and, and, and the price was somehow still volatile despite that, uh, then uh, even if we had downward price action, like, you, you just see me sitting there. I don't know. Where would mine be? I wouldn't be, like, if the price is down, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be fearful. Would it just be, would I just be neutral the whole time? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's going down. I don't know. I mean, what would, what, does, what would you call my sentiment? I guess, or you could say that I'm always greedy. I don't care, but definitely not fear. You call it what you will. I'm just saying, like in a world of only moon lambos. But of course, in a world of only moon lambos, there wouldn't be volatility because I'm a stubborn little bitch and I am not going to sell my crypto at a loss, which is why I've said many times over the years that, you know, even if I'm wrong in XRP and crypto, like let's say it's just, it's a disaster. We're all wrong about this. And then uh, XRP actually runs to zero. Uh, okay, fine. I'm going down with the ship because I just don't believe that's going to happen. I, I really don't. I, I believe that there's massive pullbacks, but those don't shake me out of my position. And so if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I've only invested what I'm willing to lose. But gosh, I sure as hell don't believe that because businesses need it to conduct their business models. People are using it all the time. There is real utility to be had. And it's not just the technology. It's the fact that it's actually adopted and standards matter. matter. And um, because XRP is adopted, it's one of the most liquid cryptocurrencies on the planet. And that actually matters. If you're somebody trying to move money around uh, from exchange to exchange, you need a liquid cryptocurrency, which you can't code into a cryptocurrency. It just has to happen in open markets. And so there's so many reasons that I just don't think that XRP is going away. It's just, it's incredible technologically. It really is. Um, and now here was a, uh, here's a tweet from chart analyst Plan B, who is one of the most popular chart analysts in all of crypto. And he's the one that applied the stock to flow model to crypto. And, uh, and he, he tweeted out the following. Just to reconfirm this message from last month, and he tweeted that out yesterday, and what, what, what was he sharing? A tweet from July 2nd. My on-chain data, color overlay in the chart below, tells me this bull is not over and $64,000 was not the top. That is in line with the stock-to-flow X model. 
Also, my floor indicator, not based on stock to flow, says we will not go below uh, $47,000 in August for the close. So won't close the month out below $47,000. That's what his model shows for Bitcoin. Uh, we'll, we'll see if that ultimately happens, but it, I, I, whatever you think of the stock to flow model, it is true that to this point, it's just been chugging along perfectly. Uh, I'm skeptical that it's going to forever because it's not taking uh, demand fluctuations ultimately into account. It's just, it's basically just looking, it's looking at supply. The, the you know, the amount of new Bitcoin entering the space uh, based on, on uh, what's being mined. And uh, I, I just think if you hit, a, you know, a, an instance in time where like an insane, for whatever the catalyst is, way more people come in uh, th than had historically, then that demand is is going to dramatically throw throw off this chart. And so stock to flow, I just like, I, yes, I admit that it's been falling or wrong, but I just, I'm skeptical of the long-term viability of this chart because it's not sufficiently taking into account demand. But we'll see, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, I don't know, I feel fairly confident about that, but I don't, I don't want to put a timestamp on it either because I don't pretend to know, like I don't know when um, the, the, the demand that we've been seeing, uh, the rate at which people are onboarding, which they have been for over a decade now, I don't know at which point that would dramatically change, but if it does one time, then the model's invalidated. It has, it has to happen once. So recognizing that, I'm like, eh, yeah, I could see it happening once. You know, <laughs> I don't know, you, you guys can tell me what you think about that one. I just thought I'd share uh, I'm not completely set in stone on my opinion on that, but uh, that, that's why I'm looking at it right now. Uh, here's a tweet from Credible Crypto. He wrote, the plan remains the same. And he was sharing a tweet from June 28th. And by the way, the reason I'm pulling these up is because it's fun to look at now that we're seeing the upper price action, those noisy little bears, they've shut the hell up as they should. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it, look, I, I get, I understand the emotions run high when you've invested in something and price goes down. I am actually sympathetic. I'm just having a little bit of fun here. But uh, it, it was never more probable that we'd we'd go down and see Bitcoin at twenty thousand dollars, or that we'd enter a multi-year bear market at this per point in time. And fine, I, I never said that it was impossible because that to me would have gone too far. Too far because when you're talking about chart analysis, it's not about coming out and saying I certainly believe so and so. It's more about, in terms of probabilities, what's more likely than not to occur. And in my humble opinion, it seemed to make way more sense that we were going to be moving to the upside, which to this point has been validated. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're going to keep going on up from exactly here. And again, your future people. So maybe we've, uh, over, who, who knows, maybe we had a snag for a week or two or whatever. I'm, I'm just saying the overall trend is going to continue up, and I do believe we'll still see that one final leg up for this market cycle. But anyway, Credible Crypto on June 28th tweeted the following. If we can break thirty-five dollars to $38,000, I'm looking for a move to $45,000 to $55,000. And he's talking about Bitcoin, of course. If we can get to $55,000, I'll look to hedge short. I know if we manage to get there, many people will be euphoric, calling for new all-time high. When in reality, that region is the most likely to see, uh, the most likely place to see a midterm rejection. Have a plan. Now, I want to be clear here too. He has big bags that he holds for the long haul, and no matter what happens in terms of price action, he doesn't sell them until like the crazy asymmetry has has occurred relative to other markets. That is to say, that prices go up parabolically. And so, but he is a trader. So he has a smaller bag and he's publicly shared this. This is not a secret where he does trade. And so he's referencing that type of activity here. So yeah, once you have a big jump up, he's talking about in terms of trading. If you're a trader, he's saying that he, he would head short there. Um, I still think that most people should never try and time markets. That's my, that's my position because data shows that most people that do that, they lose money. Uh, in fact, it's 90, depending on the poll you look at, uh, you know, it's, it's 90 to 95% of, uh, of, of individuals that engage in trading actually lose money. And so even if you're not a regular trader, there's a lesson to be learned from that. I mean, if you're not a trader, then you have even less experience. And you're just, you think that maybe you're going to sell and buy buy cheaper. Uh, yeah, that works sometimes. But if you mess that up once, you can just totally wreck your entire year. Like, what's what's the point? And then there, if you're in the United States and some other countries, there are serious tax implications for not holding for at least a year before before selling. And so for, to me, it's just not worth it. Like, and then you want to take on all the additional stress like for me, it's just not worth. It. That's why I'm just a, I'm a dude that just holds. I don't try and do. I just it's a very unsophisticated approach. But the people that have a more sophisticated approach, at least they perceive it as that. Uh, the data shows they don't do as well. Yes, you're making all these moves in and out of positions. Look at you doing stuff, except for you're losing money. 
So you can laugh at my simple position, but my simple position, the data shows, will outperform your very sophisticated one. Ooh, sleek and savvy. Look at you. Getting in and out of positions. Ooh, so impressive. Uh, and then here was a, a tweet from uh, Michael Vandepop. And this one was from yesterday evening, about uh, so, yeah, a little less than 12 hours ago. And he wrote, the total crypto market capitalization is still facing resistance. And this is interesting just to see how quickly things can change. So he was talking about this heavy resistance area, which was the, the crypto asset class uh, market cap of, uh, I call it about 1.66 trillion to 1.71 trillion. And again, as I record this, we're past that. Uh, now, as I record it, 1.81 trillion dollars. And yes, I know things are volatile. It could go back to the downside. Uh, but it looks like we're a fair bit above that resistance zone he was talking about. So we shall see. Uh, and then and then Michael Vandepop also wrote this uh, just, just a few hours ago. This is at 2.59 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. And he wrote, it's funny. Two weeks ago, everyone was waiting for $20,000 on Bitcoin. Now, most of you are asking, when should I buy back? Well, do you have a time machine? <laughs> so just, that's what I, I was saying this too. I was sharing with you. How many analysts did I share with you? When, when, even when the Bitcoin price slipped briefly below $30,000, I was sharing with you tweets from all these analysts that I respect and follow. And they're saying, look, what's more probable? They never, they, they, you never put a stamp on it, but it's just about probabilities. What were they saying? A lot of them were very vocal. They said, look, the people that think Bitcoin's going to $20,000, they'll be buying Bitcoin back above $40,000. And now we're above $40,000. Doesn't mean we'll ever dip back into the 30, whatever thousand dollar region. But this idea of Bitcoin going back down to $20,000 was never what was probable. Not not for this this portion of, of the market cycle. Uh, and then there is this tweet from chart analyst Love Crypto from, just from four hours ago. Bitcoin at major resistance area taking significant profits here would be smart. So he seems to think that the price is actually gonna be going down in the short term, so I wanted to highlight that. And then in a separate tweet, he did note though, this is for swing traders, not investors. And you have to differentiate between the two. I am not a trader. I, I'm investing in cryptocurrency. And once the price goes up substantially higher, uh, then I'll, and I'm enticed to sell, that's fine. But I'm not getting in and out of positions. I'm a multi-year holder. I've never cashed out any of my cryptocurrency into fiat currency, never. I've never sold a single XRP, not ever. But I sure as hell plan to. This market cycle, I'm going to sell the vast majority, if not all, of my crypto. Uh, so I hope that I'm sufficiently enticed to do so, and I think that there's a good probability of that. But we're going to find out together, aren't we? So anyway, there's the quick update. Good to see this stuff. Let me know how you're feeling below, your thoughts on the market. But I'm out. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Nambo.